Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mediocre Takes podcast. Um, let's just keep it short and sweet today. Today we're continuing our ranking every blank we've reviewed so far. Um, so we've already ranked every short pilot and movie that we reviewed so far. And today we're doing shows. And hey guys, if you want to check out a, a visual of how we ranked all of these, we will have a tier maker list on our Instagram and um, Blue Sky. So check us out. So yeah, let's just get started with the shows we've reviewed so far and ranking them. So the first show that we're going to talk about is Hell of a Boss. This is very much a show that started off strong but became extremely weak over time. I feel like the first season was actually pretty decent despite its edginess, but then it kind of went downhill at the start of season 2. I just don't like how these characters have changed, and I don't like where the plot is going. Mel and I don't plan on continuing the series either at all, so we'll, we don't, won't know if it gets any better at least. Don't we have two episodes that we never release? Yes, okay, so I edited those <laughs> two episodes and I was like, why am I going to post them if we never if we don't plan continuing? So I just never posted them. That's good. I think we should keep them. We should hold them hostage. Yeah, I was going to ask you eventually, but I keep forgetting to. I never edited. I never I ne well, I edited one and then I never finished the second one because I was like, wait a minute. We're not planning on continuing the series anymore. So there's no point really. You know what? We should hold them hostage and then we'll release them as like some sort of bonus content when we reach like a milestone or something. Well, okay, here's the thing. I don't want our fan base. I don't want not our fan base. That sounds weird. I don't want our viewer <laughs> base to be hell of a boss and has been able to tell fans. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right on that. So I feel like we shouldn't just post them in general. You know, you're right. We should burn them is what you're saying. And I agree. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't think the show is going to get any better. I don't know because I won't watch it. So yeah, I give this a C. You are very generous, might I say. I, I agree with everything you said. It, it did start off really strong, and I, I think it just got really worse, and I became less and less interested in it. And I think by the time we got to season two, I felt like they fumbled the bag. There was a lot of like tonal issues. I, I, I think we talked about this in the last Hell of a Boss episode we uploaded. I'm not sure, though. But there were huge issues with how they would bring up very serious topics. And then like a couple seconds later or in the middle of it, it'd be like dick joke. And it was so strange to me. I also feel like I really liked how it was episodic in the beginning. And then they sort of like created a storyline, which is where I feel like I started not caring about it and where I feel like they sort of fumbled the bag. I'm not a fan of fan bases in general because I know how toxic they can get. I'm not saying this fan base is toxic. I'm just saying <laughs> I don't necessarily want to interact with it. And I feel like I, I do sort of have a bit of a vendetta against this show because our episodes on it are like more popular than the episodes we've made about things that we actually really like. So personally, this is my ranking is out of anger. I give this an F. I think I've ranked everything Vivzy Pop has made an F. <laughs> wow. That's that's amazing. Yeah, because I think I ranked maybe I didn't. I think I oh no, I ranked Husband Hotel a D. No, wait, I think I moved it down to an F. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, Vivzy Pop gets an F. All right, our next show is Infinity Train. Literally all good things to say about this. This truly was an amazing show through and through. Cartoon Network really had something good with this, and I'm sad that a stupid corporate merger ruined it. Every single season was so interesting. I love how there was a new cast of characters each season and um, we got to see a different interesting storyline with these very complex characters. And yeah, I give this an S. Okay, Infinity Train is a masterpiece that was sadly killed before it could ever be finished. There were supposed to be four more seasons of this show, but it was cancelled because they thought it would be too adult, which is so annoying. Anyways, I'm begging y'all to watch this show because I know the majority of you guys haven't. Honestly, the pilot got so many views when it was first released on YouTube, but barely any of those pilot viewers actually ended up watching the actual show, which is so annoying. That's from my belief, at least. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's what I think so far based on the views the pilot had and based on how many people actually talk about the actual show. Don't know if how accurate that is, so don't quote me on that. But I genuinely believe that and that, that makes me only more annoyed because this is such a good show, you guys. I love the story and the characters and the writing as well. Season 3 is still my favorite. I feel like I know Mal didn't like season 3 as much as I did, but I think what that season did with, I feel like her name was, oh my god, I forgot her name already. The girl, the, the, um, the cult leader. I really like what they did with her. What? She's not a cult leader. 
Yes, she is. Oh no, I thought you meant. I thought you were saying the. I thought you were calling the conductor cult leader. I was like, no, she's just like an angry British woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the cult leader. Um, I really love what they did with her. I really love her ending, and I love how even though she did get an ending, the ending isn't concrete. Like it shows that there's still a lot of growth she has to go through. I feel like that's a really important scene. I just really love every season. I think they're all well written, and I really love the concept as well. And I gave this an S. Okay, so the next show we're talking about is the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared web series. This is another really strong show. I love how funny this show can be at times while also still having a horror aspect to it. My favorite episode is the one where Duck and the other guy are in the kitchen and then people just randomly start singing. I don't know how to explain it, but the way the song starts has always been really funny to me. I also love the production value. Everything looks like it was made meticulously and I really appreciate that. I can see why people love this so much and I rank this an A. Hey, okay. I think I was much more generous with, with my rankings for the shows. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I was not willing to watch something that I didn't think I wasn't going to like. But I really don't even know what to say about Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, except I think it's just my type of humor, and I really enjoyed that. I think the one thing I maybe did not like about it, which I also think is a plus to the show, was the blood because I, it's a texture thing. The fact that I knew that like there was liquid on the felt of the puppets made me nauseous, which is interesting because I think all the other gore in the show I didn't have an issue with. But generally, this is really like a, a once in a generation project that was really interesting and, and fun to watch. And I did rank this an S. Okay, our next show is Epithet Erased. I, this, this show wasn't for me. <laughs> this show wasn't for me. And it's so funny I say that because Marco literally like unboxed his little Epithet toys in front of me. <laughs> yes, I just got two Epithet Erased figurines today and I unboxed them in front of Mel. I love this show so much. And Mel, I just think you're so wrong on so many levels, but you're my friend, so I respect you for that. And that's okay. I think it's okay for us to have differences. But only when I don't agree with you. When you don't agree with me, it does make me angry. <laughs> but yeah, I just don't think it, it was for me. I don't necessarily have any memories of the show because I don't think it was anything that really stood out to me. I, I did like how they implemented the TTRPG aspects of it with how the characters would sort of move across a board. But I honestly think that was the only thing that really stood out to me that was really interesting and i think the one character i liked was one that they jokingly said was like six feet tall and that's literally it um i gave this a c just because i feel really neutral about it okay literally the first thing i wrote down is i know mal wasn't the biggest fan of this show but i absolutely love it a lot i find this show to be just really comforting and the story always sticks with me i know a lot of people don't like the animation style of the show but i really love it and find it really endearing i think it's amazing that the show is still able to be made despite the low budget and i think the animators are able to create some really great scenes despite the low amount of money they had to work with I love how when there's ad breaks, there's these cards that explain a bit about the characters. And I also love the art in general. It's just really good. And I know that the that the show itself isn't the strongest. However, the sequel to the show, which I know we're not ranking the sequel, but I just want to mention uh, the book that came out after the show is just really strong. And I really love it. Yeah, I know I'm being biased when it comes to this show, but I just love it so much. And I find it really comforting. And for that, I have to rank it an S. Okay, the next show is also another show that I ranked S, and that is Bloom Into You. So this is pretty much my favorite piece of media of all time, and I don't think I'll ever have the right words to explain why I love it so much. So I'll just give a few notes about it that I have. I love all these characters. I love how Toko is putting on a mask and trying to become her sister, and her growth throughout the series. I love Yu's character growth as well, and the exploration of sexuality in this. I also think this anime is just really pretty to look at overall, and I think the anime is solid overall. Because this is an adaptation of a manga, I feel like the anime definitely enhanced the story overall because everything about this anime is just really well polished. The animation, the voice acting, everything. The one thing I don't like about the show is that it ends on a cliffhanger and there's no season 2 which makes me really sad. There's also this older lesbian couple that Sayaka, a lesbian, goes to advice for and it's just really good. I really love this show. Yeah, I think... You know, this was an interesting anime to watch. I think this was the first, like, specifically lesbian anime I watched. 
and I remember absolutely loving the background art. I remember liking a few of the background characters. I loved, I think, Toko's character in general. I think of the two, she was the one I was most interested in just because, you know, like you said, the, like the mask that she puts on and stuff. I also like how all of that tied into the play. And I, I was angry that it left on a cliffhanger and I was going to read the manga. And then I thought to myself, you know, I think this is just something that I watch and I, I, I don't read <laughs> because it was it was a pretty slow story. It was like it was like a slice of life story. Um, and I think that this specifically wasn't like the difference between this and um, my favorite manga in the world. She loves to cook and she loves to eat is literally just like the age the age I really was not interested in these high schoolers, middle school, high schoolers. I just think of uh, when we got those two older background character lesbians i was immediately interested in them and i was like "Ooh, let's hear about that so yeah i just if they make another season of anime then i would watch it but it's not something i would re-watch and it's not something that i'm like dying to watch there were some pretty amazing scenes between the two main characters uh and i do i do love that this mate was made in the first place so i gave it a b our next show is first kill this was i mean what could i say except this was camp and i love it and i love that we got some camp in a show format instead of just a film the dialogue was silly some of the scenes were even sillier but i just think overall we needed this we needed this and there the, the thing that sucks about the fact that this was canceled was that i really think they set up some interesting stuff they had a lot of connections to, uh, I think it was Greek mythology and um, the Bible. And it was just, oh, there was so much that could have been done with this show, but we weren't, we were, it was taken away from us because Netflix hates gay people. But yeah, I just feel like we talked about this uh, during our review, but it feels like whenever something that is like queer is, is made like a movie or a, a show or I feel like there's this expectation that it has to be this masterpiece or it has to be art or it has to be something really like deep and serious. But in reality, we are just like very silly, goofy people. And I feel like we deserve bad media just like straight people do. And I gave this an A. Okay, so I struggled on where to put this show because looking back at this show, it feels like a trashy YA novel in a lot of ways. And in a lot of ways, it is. But at the same time, I love that about this show. And I don't think I would like it as much if it was any different. But at the same time, the only reason I watched this show was for the lesbians. And that's it. I also hated how the show ended. I also agree with you. I really like where some plot points were going, especially with one of the main characters, Brothers. But I don't like how the lesbians had a breakup near the end. I don't get it. And I don't think I ever will. Like, I get it. But at the same time, I don't get it and that it felt too much like a third act breakup to me. I think I might have ranked this a bit too low, but at the same time, I don't think I should change the ranking. I ranked this a C. <laughs> I was judging. That's, no, 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 no. I, I get that for you. I get that for you. And that's okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I'm glad you understand. Okay, the next show we're going to talk about is one that Mal did not like, and that is Sasuke and Miyano. I just want to apologize to Mal for making them watch this show because I should have realized that Mal would not like this in the end. This show I have mixed things on because at first I liked it, then I didn't, and now I think it's just okay. I hate how despite the show being gay, it feels like it's catering to a straight girl audience a lot of the time, which is honestly so gross. Nasty. There were also times where Sasuke, the love interest, was acting a bit too possessive at time, which is also honestly so gross. But I think there's a part of me that, despite all of that, still enjoys this show for what it is. And I think the only reason I'm able to enjoy this show is because it's gay and it has a happy ending, which is something I don't see often in anime, um, which is why I mostly watch, sadly. So, yeah, I gave this a C. You gave this a C? Okay. Marco, what do you think I ranked this? D? <gasps> You're correct. I'm surprised you ranked it so I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. Actually, can I just say, pat on the back for me for influencing you to not like this as much as you originally <laughs> did. I was actually personally very happy about that. Yeah, I don't think there necessarily was an episode that I liked. And I think even at the end, the last episode, um, I was supposed to do the review on it. And I was like, this happens and this happens and this happens in the end. And you were like, you forgot about the part where they kiss. And I'm like, oh. I think I stopped watching at that point. <laughs> I was just so excited for it to end and I saw the credits rolling and I was like, okay, goodbye. But that's generally how I felt about this in general. Uh, what I do appreciate about 
episode was, I think it was, and this is going to sound so silly to say, I think this was our, I don't want to say this, not like most unhinged, but like, I feel like this is when Hater Mal really came out and I really enjoyed that. Also, I, I remember during the episode, I added in little clips of me like editing Marco Me and you talked about how much you loved that. It's yes. just a really well edited, well polished episode because I feel like we, we have a lot of discourse about this show and it's also our longest episode, I think. It's like 50 minutes long. I, I think it's just a really good episode. You guys, if you have like an hour of time, you should really listen to the episode because it's really good, honestly. That is like, I, I hate to say that, but the fa- I think the fact that the show was bad in my opinion, was actually, like, turned out to, like, create a, a like, turning point in our podcast, <laughs> which is sad to say. Yeah, I think there were minor characters that we maybe got a total of 10 minutes uh, of screen time with that I liked more than the main characters. Uh, all I remember really is just, just just goofing on them and how stupid they were. I, and I guess the one thing that I did appreciate about the show was that it made me, like, bloom into you a little bit more so yeah a d now to something good dead end paranormal park i once again think this was a very solid show they had some very interesting characters i like how they were implemented in the show i love how the minor characters interacted with the um main characters um i love how the minor characters got storylines i think the only thing i didn't like about the show (laughs) was the talking dog but i that's just something that i personally have an issue with just like talking animals in general not a big fan of but overall an amazing show and sadly one that was once again canceled by netflix because like i said before they are like certified homophobic and this time they didn't even have an excuse dead in paranormal park is a good show like it's not it's not camp it's not cheesy it's not like accidentally purposefully bad it was a good show yet they canceled it so i give this an s this is another amazing show that was taken out before it could really finish season two ends with the cliffhanger of norma going to the demons wanting to hurt the angels and it would have been really cool to see that conclusion this was a really good show otherwise Though I will say, I still find Pugsley to be the worst part of the show, like you. He's honestly so gross. I love the queer representation, even though I'm personally not a fan of the main gay couple in the show. I also love Courtney. She's really great. But yeah, this show was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I especially love that scene where Norma goes to like this other world where like she's being possessed. And while she's being possessed, she goes to the other world. And while she's being possessed, she finds this impersonator of one of the characters. And she's like, you need to like face the truth and everything. Like that was a really good scene. I just really think this is a well polished show, and I really like it. Do you like gay men? You know, <laughs> when you put it like that. Like I'm just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> because you start, you started to not like Sasuke and Miano. Which wait, me and how do you say Miano, it? Miano, Miano, whatever. Miano, Miano. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you, you started to not like that and then you're like i don't like <laughs> i don't like the main relationship <laughs> in this cartoon <laughs> who who happened to be gay do you like gay men <laughs> i also don't like Faz during golden wine so okay so what's going on? anyways I love that, no i love can i just say i love that you don't like like animated gay relationships but you love animated lesbians <laughs> i love most lesbians in general oh and i love that about you marco <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay anyways. anyways i ranked um dead in Pernal park and a okay the next show is love death and robot so when i look back about this show i really like it however when i really look back on this show i can't help but have one main problem with it and that is the excessive nudity in this show it just so didn't need to be there and then when the majority of times. Other than that, the majority of these short stories are absolutely beautiful. Some of these short stories also felt really straight. Like you know that one, I think it was like of the army dudes, and one of the and and one of the opening scenes was just him pissing like on the camera. I just yeah, I remember. I no, I, I remember, but I remember that one being like very um uh, undertones of like very homoerotic. Yeah, but at the same time, it still felt straight, and I didn't like that. You know. Yeah. Anyways, I think this is a decent show. I just feel like there are a few weird episodes every now and then. But overall, it's pretty great. And I rank this a B. Okay, yeah. I mean, in in, re- in in regards to the amount of excessive nudity, I think a lot of that happened in season one. And in season two and three, the short films really focused on more of like story aspects of it. And like nudity was either just like, 
you know, a byproduct of a situation um, or like nothing too serious, except for the sex scenes. And so I, anyway, yeah, there are like sexual episodes, but a lot of them were in season one. It was a mixed bag, but I think that overall there were more really good short films than than bad ones. I think actually there were only a handful of ones that I did not like at all. A lot of them I thought were great or amazing. And overall, I love that we got this sort of anthology series where a bunch of different studios that used like different types of animation styles were able to create something and show uh, Netflix subscribers everywhere what they had to offer. So I give this an A. Our next show is She Ran the Princesses of Power. Uh, S. S tier. I ranked it at S tier. I mean, guys, okay, you should listen to our episodes on She and the Princesses of Power, but TLDR, I absolutely love this show. I think the one thing that I, I, I wish most of all for this show was that it was given a little bit more time. I, I think the one thing that we both agree on is the fact that Catra's trajectory was a little sped up. For me, I wish we had more time for her redemption to feel more earned, but I also understand <laughs> that, ooh, once again, Netflix was giving Andy uh, a timeline. But besides that, I think overall it was an amazing reboot, and I just I just love what Indy did with the story. I love the characters. I love actually all of the characters, except uh, believe it or not, Swiftwind, the talking uh, Pegasus. But yeah, I wish there was a movie. I know there's never going to be a movie, but I, I hope, pray, and wish every single morning and night for a She and the Princess is a Power movie. Or at least like a fucking comic series. I just think, can I just, I just hate the fact that He-Man gets like five different Netflix shows with like different types of animation and like five different comic series and she gets nothing. They get get a five season whatever okay your turn marco <laughs> homophobia at its finest i think this is a pretty great show but despite my criticisms i think that there are some episodes that just really didn't need to be there and felt like filler which is honestly disappointing because this show is going some pretty interesting directions also this is a nitpick but i'm still disappointed about what they did with ron hordak like he just kind of disappeared in the end i wanted more of him like more, replace him with the real hordak you know yes Yes, I wish Hordak died. Um, but overall, I think this is a pretty decent show. I, I'm just happy that it has a happy ending and that the two lesbians actually kiss and everything. It's just- And they're- not only did they kiss, but their kiss literally saved the universe. Like, guys, come on! <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all want to talk about a happy ending? Oh, yeah. spoilers, I guess. Uh -oh. oh, well, who cares? But yeah, this is a really fun show. I liked it. I just have a few criticisms about it, and for that, I gave it a B. Yeah. Guys, please listen to our Shira episodes, please. We literally please. posted five of them, so. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next show we're gonna be talking about is Humans Be Gone. This is a really interesting web series and I'm really excited to see where it goes in the future. I find myself sometimes not being able to follow what's going on in the plot at times, but I do rewatch it a bunch. And when I do finally get to understand where it's going, I'm really interested. I also love the animation style of this and I give this an A. Okay, this is such a unique show like i i genuinely have not seen anything in this type of format i'm just i'm absolutely loving it it's so unique i gave it an s our next show is super team four this this was i think the first like kids show we watched it didn't have like a shira type beat to it where it was like yeah it's an animated cartoon and kids could watch it but it had like older teenager adult oriented themes this was straight up like for kids like it was fun it was a little serious at times but like overall it was very fun and enjoyable to watch i loved how unique the villains were i loved the array of villains we had i just really loved most of the characters and how unique each of them were it's not a deep show but it was it was it was fun to watch overall so i gave it an a this is a really fun action-packed show that I really enjoyed watching. I feel like the worst part of this show was the goat and the episode surrounding the goat, but everything else was pretty solid. The animation is great and the story is pretty strong. I just wish we'll get a season 3 so there's an actual conclusion to this show, and I rank this a B. Okay, the last show we're going to talk about is Head Row. I'm sorry, but I don't really like anything about this show. I'm sorry. I found all the characters to be annoying and I didn't care about the plot at all. I just found the show so boring and I just could not care. I could give less fucks. And for that, I ranked it a D. Okay. Oh my god, you're so mean. <laughs> well, I have to be honest. You're right, you're right, you're right. I understand who the audience is for this. And I don't think we were the audience. But I did think they had some 
really funny scenes. Some of the characters I was really interested in and I really wanted to see more of them. Sadly, it, it had its it had its limits. So we didn't get a lot of character exploration with some of the characters that I thought were a little bit more interesting than sort of our main character and um, their situation. But I appreciate it for what it is. And I know that it is something that will help a lot of youngsters out there. I gave it a C. And that's it. Anyways, you guys, that's our ranking of every show and every pilot and every short and every movie. If you enjoyed watching this, then follow us because we don't have enough followers, to be honest. If you want to send us a voice message on Spotify for podcasts, just link in the description to do so below. That's an Instagram and Blue Sky at Mid Takes Pod and a TikTok at the Mid Takes Pod and a YouTube channel at the Mediocre Takes Podcast. Just check out our ads in the description. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We finally started posting on TikTok now, so check that out and we're also doing a youtube exclusive series called the mediocre monthly which is basically this comic book club <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i want to finish the drink but it tastes so bad <laughs> i can tell I, whenever you drink it you would do this face and you're like uh. and yeah that's everything so goodbye